What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in today. I know it's been a while. I hope you're enjoying your morning, if you're listening to this in the morning. I hope you're enjoying your evening. I hope you're enjoying uh, your lunch break. I hope you're enjoying work, if you're listening to this during work. I hope you're enjoying your life every day. Um, I hope you're making the most out of every minute you have, um, every waking second you have in this world. And I hope you continue to live a life that you are proud of and you feel comfortable with and you feel like every day you get up is a blessing and you don't feel like you're wasting a second of your day um, doing nothing. And I hope that if you are, you can find something in your life that turns it around for you and you can start feeling like you are succeeding every day and every moment of your life, there is a meaning toward to it. I'm going to go ahead and take these cups off of that container because that was getting very risky. Man, I need to upgrade my table size. Do you guys see how tiny this table is? I was talking to somebody at, at work about it. He was telling me how tiny the table is. I never really thought of it, dude. I record on this tiny-ass table. I mean, this thing is not big. Like, I'm over here. I got my book right here. I got my plants right next to me. I got one drink and I got two drinks. I got my hot drink and I got my cold drink right next to each other. And the podcast is right in front of me. Dude, there's not a lot of room, man. It's kind of funny. Um, I need to I need to start upgrading things, man. I mean, we're on episode 43. I think it's time to put some money back into it. Even though which there's not any money coming in straight from the podcast, I think it's time for me to start taking some of my personal money and start investing in some things and looking to... Um, expand this uh, this business, <laughs> not this business, but this activity into a place where I can have more freedom uh, when it comes to uh, my, my uh, I guess my, yeah, I guess more freedom with what I want to do with the podcast. There's so much stuff I want to do. There's so many conversations I want to have with people. But like I said, and I'll continue to say it, in order for me to feel comfortable doing that, I am going have to, I'm going to have to take this podcast and move it out of my room, <laughs> out of the corner of my bedroom, so I can uh, have guests on and we can have conversations outside of this house. Um, but yeah, so I hope I mean that should be happening very soon. It, guys, it's been a while since I've done a podcast. I'm looking here. My last one I recorded was the 10th of November. That's what I have here. I have the 10th of November it was the last time I recorded a podcast. And that's been a while. And I, it's been a few days since you guys saw one. I think it's been like five days. But here's the truth, man. I was gone all weekend and I just kind of had a, you know, I just relaxed a little bit. I got away from everything. I, uh, I've i really been cutting down on my phone use. Like I've been using my phone mainly only to promote certain things, to promote uh, the podcast, to promote um anything like that. And other than that, I just haven't been using it. I've noticed I use my phone a lot when I'm away from my girl and I use it a lot so I can, you know, talk to her. But when I'm with her, there's no point for me to have my phone. And it's, it's like magic. You know, it's so funny. Like there's so many issues going on with people's health nowadays. And I understand for so many different reasons, but I think a huge, a huge, uh, a huge solution to this, to, to, to the, to the um, mental, uh, the lack of mental health, the lack of mental awareness um, with everybody is our cell phones. I mean, it, it really is that simple. It's just the ability or the, 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 the connection you have to somebody and places and organizations all the time, 24-7, is mentally draining. Um, you almost always feel like you're on edge, like you have to respond to somebody. I was talking to somebody and I was telling them I don't text back usually, and I don't really call back. Um, and it comes off as it, – it's so crazy nowadays. It's If you don't immediately text someone back, if you don't immediately call somebody, if you don't respond to someone's email, it's – you you're kind of a dick, right? It's so strange. Like if you don't do that, you almost like people look at you a different way. Like you aren't a good person. Um, and I, I get it. Like I understand that. Sorry about that. Like, I understand, but what I've found is the the less and less I have the phone in my hand and the less that I'm detached from technology, um, 
mainly just the phone, and I guess a laptop up to a point. Um, but on my laptop, I mainly just listen to YouTube videos and audiobooks and stuff like that. Um, but having that phone away from me, like away from my general facility, and I literally, I would, I took my phone when I was away this weekend, and I would just put it in the house, and I would just go out. I didn't need it. I, I didn't need it on me. I, I would always make excuses. Oh, I need to have the phone on me at this time, at this time, at this time. But the, 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 the truth is, I didn't need it on me. And I felt so much less pressure. I felt like there was times I was like, oh my God, I need to respond to this here. I need to save this idea now. I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to text this person. I forgot to text this person back. I need to get this covered. I need to, you know, blah, 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 blah. But they didn't have to get done because I didn't go too far out of my way to get them done. You know, it made me realize there's so many things that I think I have to do and I must do when in reality, I don't have to do that. And I don't, I don't need to do that specific subject. And it was just so nice. I felt like I was just like, it was like getting off of a drug, you know, and it's, it's a drug that everyone has come to this world, come to this realization to just accept. But it's mentally draining. It really is. It's emotionally draining. And having the phone on you all the time is just fucking exhausting. And it's so insane to me because I was thinking about it. Dude, the best I've ever been, like, mentally and with, like, in relationships, and I guess just as a person, was the days after I got away from my cell phone. You know? Like, I would go to the lake and I didn't use a phone because I didn't have service. Or I would go to the beach or whatever it was. You know? And it's just the phone's gone. You know, it's gone. And I don't know this correlation. I, I I don't know. I don't know exactly if the reason this happens is because that didn't happen. But I was having dreams all weekend. And I don't dream. I'm not a dreamer. I, I used to be, but I kind of stopped dreaming. And I think it's, I think for a few reasons. I When I do dream, I dream right before I wake up. Like an hour to two hours before I wake up. And I was sleeping into about nine o'clock every day. This past uh, weekend. And on my own, when I'm home and I'm going through my, my standard day, I'm usually up by 5.30, up by 5, out by 5.30, out by 6 a.m. So it didn't, um, so I don't really get the last two to three hours to dream. But I'm also going to bed by midnight, so I'm not really sleeping a lot. So I don't know if it was like lack of sleep that I, I usually get five to six hours of sleep a night, which I know is horrible. I usually do that for about a week straight, and then I try to get some sleep. I try to sleep in on one day, um, but then when I sleep in, I sleep in too long, and it messes up my messes up my sleep pattern, and then I'm just drowsy because y- you always have this idea that sleeping in is good for you, but it's only good for you if you routinely sleep in. Other than that, it just messes up your sleep cycle, and science and studies and after study after study have shown that the best way to live a healthy life, the number one thing to live a healthy life is to have a consistent sleep schedule. Go to bed around the same time every night and wake up every morning around the same time. Like that's just the that's just a cold hard truth. And if you don't have that, if you're going to bed at four AM and waking up at seven AM, going to bed at three AM, waking up at eleven AM, it's like you may be getting eight hours at 3 a.m. to 11, but you but you're not falling to sleep at the same time every night and you're getting up at certain times. Like having a consistent sleep cycle is the most healthiest thing you could do for your body. And that's just the truth. And uh, it's come, and I think what I'm realizing is that when I was sleeping in, I was dreaming, you know, and I also also was hitting eight hours. Like I was hitting a consistent eight hours and for like three days we were going to bed at 11 and I was up by eight, eight or nine o'clock. So I was going to bed at a reasonable time. I was getting up at a reasonable, reasonable time. I was sleeping a healthy amount, you know, like eight to nine hours. And I was dreaming, and I was just having like crazy dreams. Like I, I don't know. I had this like, <laughs> this one dream where I was like playing. I was at a baseball game, and it was like, I was playing against. I wasn't playing against anybody, but I was at the game, and I had this dream of Joe Rogan was in the outfield, and he was running out to center field to catch a flying ball, and I was like a fan, but I was running in the outfield, but like right on the edge of the fence, just back and forth, back and forth. And I was doing it all game, but nobody really cared. Like, nobody was telling me, like, stop doing it. And I just kept on doing it and doing it and doing it. And then he comes darting out to catch, like, a fly ball that's going to right field. And he comes running at the fence. And I'm, like, 
going towards the the uh, right field uh, foul pole, and and I but I'm you know I'm running around the edge of it, and he's like going diagonal straight to where I'm gonna eventually be ending up at, and we intersect at the same point, and he runs into me, hits me, I break his kneecaps, and he gets all pissed off at me, but then he has me like on his podcast show like a month later. Because I like broke his kneecaps and he like did some type of meditation while he was like broken and it like transcended his life into like a different world. And like he had me on his podcast to like talk about like, oh, was this just like, uh, like, was this supposed to happen? And it was, it was fucking trippy. And I woke up this morning and I, and I, I'm, I'm moving my feet around and I'm like kicking my dog and my dog's like looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. But I had this dream, and I think I was, like, kicking her because I was running, and I thought I was, like, running on dirt, but it was actually just her stomach. And uh, so that was interesting. And I also did another thing where I rolled over last night, and I, like, hit my girlfriend in the back of the head, but I, like, pressed on it. Now, I didn't, like, hit it, but I, like, put my hand on it, like, softly. And then I pushed up against it, and it didn't hurt her head, but I just started apologizing super quickly because I realized what I did, and she just fell right back to sleep. But, uh... Yeah, man, I think I think social media is really crushing people. You know, I know people. I mean, I'm one of those people, honestly, and people use it all day, every day. And it's I, I there was a a story, and I don't know if it's, I don't know how much of it's true. I haven't even noticed it, honestly. It may uh, it may have already happened by the time this podcast comes out. But the CEO of Instagram came out and said they're removing the likes feature from uh, from Instagram. <clears throat> and I was thinking about that. And I was my first thought is why? Because I know for me, when I use social media and I use Instagram specifically, I don't scroll through the feed. I don't like that's not how I use social media anymore or Instagram. I just view stories and I go to my discovery page to see what's on my discovery page. And I look at the podcast hashtag to see who else is podcasting and connect and make connections with people. But I don't scroll through, like, the people I follow, I don't scroll through my page to like their stuff. Like, I very, very, very rarely like people's posts. Um, so when I heard that they were moving likes, I didn't really understand why. And I've talked to a few people about it. And I didn't know this was still a thing, but people still get so much wor- worth off of the likes that they get from the post on um, Instagram. And I think the reason why I was kind of shocked by this, I'm not shocked, but um, I guess it brought back because I knew it was an issue, but I didn't realize how much of an issue it was. Sorry about that. Um, I didn't realize how much of an issue it truly was until I, because I, um, like I said, I stopped liking photos on Instagram and stuff like that. But also when I made my business account for my clothing company, I realized likes actually weren't that important. Like when you make a business account and you can see like your analytics and, and what's really, it doesn't even like, it shows like your average likes per picture or video, but it doesn't matter. What What's most important is like engagement and not just engagement, like service level, but what happens when the engagement's created? Like if someone sees your post, what do they do with it? Are they going to uh, save it, which is super important? That's like very, very highly um like if a business wants to hire you as part of their brand, they care so much about the saves. Like how many times was your post saved? Because that means people are going to continue to look at it for a while, you know? And if they just like it, people just like do that out of like almost like a reflex and nobody really cares about that. But if you like comment on it, then you want one step closer. Um, if you looked at it, so just an impression, that's pretty good too. But the saves is super important. So, like, when you have a business page, you kind of forget that likes really aren't that, um, like, no one really cares. Plus, if you're running, like, a business where you sell stuff, likes don't actually matter. Because when someone is going to buy your product, they're not even, like, really going to, like, look at your post. You know, they might just see how it fits on somebody, especially if it's, like, clothing. But usually, they're just going straight to the uh, the link in the bio, which is, like, the website, and then going to purchase the product. So I think likes got to the point where it was just for comparison. It was just like it was it was a tool that was once used for like businesses, but now it just became literally a tool just for people to compare themselves to other people. And from that aspect, I totally get why Instagram's removing it. And I think they should remove it. Um, you can still see your likes 
But like, if I post a picture and it, it gets like a hundred likes, I can see it has a hundred likes, but everybody else can't see it has a hundred likes, you know? Um, it, it, and when I saw that, I was kind of like confused by it, but I was like, that's a good thing because it does do a lot of damage. Like when I went to high school, it wasn't, Instagram was kind of, I guess some people were using it. I, I mean, everybody had it, but no one was really using it per se. Uh, Snapchat was barely around. I used a lot of Twitter. Um, but you couldn't really compare and contrast off of Twitter and Snapchat, but off of Instagram you could. And there's a lot of like stories of of girls like really getting bullied super hard because like on the Instagram post they they look a certain way. You know, they put on certain makeup and they cover their face up a certain way and they use these certain filters. I don't know how it is for guys, but I know for I know for girls it especially is like this. Um you know, and they put a selfie and then like a Sunday selfie or a Saturday selfie or whatever it is. Then you got to go to school on Monday. And if you had like a bad morning or if you had a bad evening and you don't wear the makeup the same way, you look different, you know, and then, and then it gets really confusing because then you have like an online personality, but then you still have to try to transcend that into living like a normal life and that could fuck with your head, you know, and then when you start adding likes into it and you're like, oh, this post got this many likes because I did this or this one got this many posts because I showed this, I didn't show it on this one, then you start comparing yourself and then you start, you know, you start competing with your own self, you know, which which is like not like that's just not healthy, you know, and then you start going to school and then people start bullying you because you look a certain way. Then you have an identity crisis because you like that way you look, but you can't always look that way because you're a human being and your skin's always changing. Your body's always changing. You're always going to look different. Um, so the fact that the removing likes, I think, is really good. But I did kind of have this thought. I was like, what if somebody like this is where my mind went? Like I saw that. I was like, OK, that's cool. I get it. That's a good idea. But then my mind went somewhere that was completely different. I started thinking about like new business ideas. Like what what can you <laughs> what can you do since they're getting rid of likes and you know a lot of people could still want to see how many likes something got because I think a lot of people are not closed minded but they think very secular and I think that um, likes are so important to a lot of people still. So I, I was kind of thinking in my car and I wrote this down just off the top of my head so I don't really know where it's gonna go. Um, God, dude, it only took me four and a half hours to drive back from Blacksburg, Virginia to, to my house, which is crazy. Um, oh yeah. Well, let me, um, uh, let me finish this thought and then I'm going to start talking about something, multiple things. Oh man. Dude, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. It's literally right there. So close. Uh. Yeah, so I had this idea. Since you can't, since eventually on Instagram, I, if they follow through on it, they could just be hyping it up just to make Instagram more popular and people are going to keep using it because people aren't going to stop using it. Because um, for a lot of people, it's like an alter, alter ego and everyone uses it that way. Uh, but I was thinking, like, what if another company linked up with Instagram? So it's an own separate company. It's got its own LLC. It's own trademark. It's not. It's not teamed. It's not. Uh, doesn't. It's not owned or run by Instagram. But it teams up with Instagram. Like it has like a partnership with Instagram. And what this what this company does is essentially it provides does a comment on your Instagram post that updates live. Like this comment updates uh, every second. And what it does with the update that it shows, it's it's underneath of your caption. And it's the first comment, and it shows likes and views, and like number of comments, and it updates live, and and then that allows me. So if I use it, I can only see my likes. But if I team up with this app, it's going to be able to show under the that caption on my photo, the first caption, right underneath the description, it's going to show how many likes it's getting. So it's kind of like I don't know. I was thinking like it's a way. And you pay like a two dollar monthly fee or whatever, you know. And if a bunch of people download it, it, it might already be coming out. And if it's not, somebody could take this idea and run away with it and probably make some money off of it. Um, but I don't think Instagram would let that happen because they'd be like, "Ah, fuck you guys, we'll buy you out or we'll put you out of business," or or they'll just keep the likes moving. But I, I was kind of thinking about that. I was like, that seems like a decent idea. I don't know. Um, but here's a quick. I was listening to a podcast today. And they were talking about um, 
I think beignets, no, not beignets, uh, bidets, which are like uh, butt cleaners. So when you poop, you like get on this bidet and it cleans out your booty hole, essentially. It cleans out your butt after you poop. Um, and I was thinking about it because in my head, I never really thought about what a, a bidet was. And I understood like what it was, but I didn't understand like the design of it. So I thought it was like a toilet and then it was like an attachment that hooked up to the toilet. Or like a type of toilet that came, or this thing came with the toilet, and it was like a water soaker and it shot water up you, but it was still like attached to the toilet. But as I'm listening to this podcast, they they explained it in a way that was so much different than what I thought. So what it was is, it's a, um, it's like a separate porcelain uh, design. So you have like your main toilet, and you know you sit on that, you do your business. And then you get over, so you you know you there's gap, there's tiles between this t- the toilet and the bed a bidet, and you sit on there, and it shoots water and it cleans you. And I was thinking about this. I was like, what the fuck? I feel like I've used one of these before. And I had this like real like Jimmy Neutron moment when he's like in his uh, TV show. He's like sitting there. He's like think, 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 and then it like shows like his brain thinking. Um. I digress again, but I was thinking, I was like, my cousins, I remember I used to go to my cousin's house when they moved out of this house right here into their new house. I used to go up into the parents' bathroom to like use their bathroom if like the other ones were being used or whatever. And I remember going into the toilet room where, where the toilet was. And I remember there was like a little tiny sink and I didn't know, I was too young to really figure out what it was. And I remember like looking at the sink and I was like, hey, the water doesn't come out of it though. Like, it, it came out of it, but it, like, shot up. It didn't, like, shoot down. And I was so confused about what it was. And as I'm thinking about this, I'm listening to this guy talk about it, and I put two and two together. Dude, I I thought, like, the whole world was going to come to an end because my mind was absolutely blown. I never realized that my cousins had a bidet in the bathroom the entire time. And my dumb ass thought it was, like, I thought it was, like, for some reason I, like, convinced myself. Like, I questioned myself, but I convinced myself that, it was, like, used for, like, dwarfs. Like, if dwarfs came over to use the bathroom, they could have this thing to allow them to use the restroom, and they didn't have to, like, stand up on a stepping stool to wash their hands. But there was never soap there, and I was really confused. I was like, there's not even soap there. And, like, you guys know, I don't really wash my hands all the time after I pee. I do after I poop, but not every time after I pee. So if I just went into the pee, and then I was, like, try to wash my hands out of the bidet, I was like, wait a second, that's not a bidet. That's I thought, I thought it was a sink, but it wasn't. It was a bidet. And my mind was blown because here I am now thinking that bidets only exist like in Asian countries where it's like really common. But apparently my cousins had one for the longest time and I never took advantage of it because I've always kind of wondered like what is a uh, what what does a bidet do? Like I've always wanted one, but I've never really um, <clears throat> like I've never really understood what they were. And then I, I don't know. I just thought that was so cool. I don't know. I was uh, someone put on one of my. Uh, one of my, uh, they sent me a DM and they said my podcast is very therapeutic. And I thought about that. I was like, that's really interesting because it's so funny because I do this podcast because it's like super therapeutic for me. Like I can sit here and like really complete my thoughts and like connect them to each other. And it just, when I can, when I can do that, it allows me to really think things out before I go out and I don't, I don't know. It just, it allows me to find comfort with what I'm saying. And it allows me to just feel more confident with the, with the words that come out of my mouth. Um, and it was super interesting to hear that from somebody else. And I started thinking about like new ways I could like deliver this podcast and I'm just going to throw this out there. I think, I think it'd be cool to do. Um, let me know what you guys think. I have a pool table so I could do it, but this is what I was thinking. All right. All right, so this is what I was thinking. I could do like a podcast series where I have people come over to my house and the way it would work is it's a podcast that is recorded while two people are playing pool. Billiards, whatever whatever you want to call it. But while two people are playing pool. And the way it, it would work is you get two mics and you attach them to your shirt. And then, you know, you just, and then you have one camera, maybe two cameras, but then I have to get like a multi-camera software, which I don't know how to use, but I'm sure 
I could figure it out and I would have to figure it out if I wanted to do it. And what would happen is you just set up, I bring some studio lights, I put them up in the basement and then I have two people playing pool and I just hook the mics up to the chest and then you have the cameras and you just play like three or four pool games. And it's like, then you can just hear these two people talk. Like, I think that would be super cool. And I I really honestly am thinking about doing that. I think that would help. uh, I don't know. I think it would allow me to start doing collabs and it would make, I get so worried about having other people on the show because I don't want them to be uncomfortable. And I think it would really break the ice because I I, I grew up kind of playing pool. Like my cousins always had a pool table. Then we got a pool table off the same pool table that my cousins had. And then we added like a little ping pong thing to the top of it. So I also grew up playing a lot of ping pong. Um, but you can you have really cool conversations when you're playing pool. You because you just have like real conversations with people, and I think that would be something that I could bring to the podcast, and it would allow the podcast to really get a new, uh, like a completely different, um, like a completely different uh, feeling to it, and I could have multiple people on it, and it would just it, it I don't know I think it would be a cool little thing to bring to the podcast world. And I've been thinking about doing it, probably starting it, I don't know, early next year. Um, but I did sign up for school again, so I'm going to be really busy with that. I can't believe I'm going back to another semester of school. I mean, I still have probably three three to four weeks left here, and then I'm going to Manhattan for a, a day only. But, um, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'm very proud of myself. Like, if you asked me this time last year if I would be back at Towson, finishing up a semester, getting ready to go back to another semester, and I would be happy with that, and I'd be okay with that, and I would be doing well at the job I'm at, and I would be super happy with the relationship I'm in, and everything would be going well, I probably wouldn't believe you, because I was so far gone. I mean, this time last year, I wasn't even in school. You know, I think I was still, like, contemplating the idea if I wanted to go back to school, if I ever wanted to go back to school, and it's just so crazy that one year can completely change your life. You know, the like, the whole path that you've ever taken in your life can completely change and alter itself in one year. And for me, thank God, it changed in a good way. You know, it really did. It altered itself in a good, positive manner. And I don't really understand why or where or when that happened per se, but I do know that I'm very happy with where I am right now, and I'm very excited about school. And every time I go up to Virginia Tech, I always kind of get angry. I'm like, damn, I wish I really tried in high school so I could go to a school like this. Because there's just something so pure about it, you know? And it's just so crazy. Because, because I think since, like, episode one I did a podcast, I was just not the same viewpoint on school at all. And to think that now I'm thinking about this about school, and I'm just, like, I've gotten to the point where I've just become addicted about learning. You know, I've just come to this, I've found this place, this thing that I just, I love. I love the idea of learning. I love the idea of not knowing something and just expanding your mind again and again and again because I, I honestly think that's the best way to live a fulfilling life. You know, I really do. And and it's something that I personally strive for every day. You know, I try every day to just wake up and learn something that I didn't know. And it's a lot of it's been through these books that I'm reading. Like all these books are amazing. Like Thinking to Strangers, a beautiful book, Written by Malcolm Godwell. Did I agree with everything? No. But did I read it? Absolutely. Do I have a different viewpoint? Absolutely. Um, something deeply hidden. All about quantum mechanics. Like, do I go to school for quantum mechanics? Will I ever go to school for quantum mechanics? I don't know. Do I currently go for it? No. Was I interested in it? Kind of. And I read it, and it was so interesting to just kind of have And it's like you think about the world in a different way. Um, the Human Instinct. Beautiful book. Uh, Steven Pinker, How the Mind Works, something that I think everyone should read and behave, which is my life-changing book. Um, Elastic, amazing book. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, a book that every everybody should read. The Male Brain, a super interesting book. I liked it. You know, all these books here, just super, you know, I, I think life can just get so boring if you just sit there and you are always just, in your bubble and you don't challenge your bubble and you don't challenge other thoughts and you don't challenge your own viewpoints. You know, you have these ideas and you're so comfortable with them because you don't have to, you don't have to try to expand them because you, then you surround yourself with people who don't challenge your viewpoints, who don't push you, you know, 
And then if you stop pushing yourself, you're going to just start falling backwards. And I think it's very important to become addicted to learning. And it's so easy to, to do. It really is. It's so easy to do. You can pick up a book. You can sign up for a class. You can look up a YouTube video on, on uh, learn, start learning about the medieval times, start learning about the opium um, shipping uh, trade between China and the Middle East, you know, you can start learning about anything. You can start looking at the history of different religions. You can start looking at the history of, you know, the Middle East or Africa. You can just, there's so many things you can learn. And I think it's like, I think when, when you meet people and they just seem so dull and they just seem so boring and like life is just beating them down. I think it's because they just closed off their mind to like possibilities in the like worlds of, um, uncharted territory because not everybody knows everything like there's not one person who knows every single thing in the world and there never will be and you never will get close to it and for most people i think that's like scary for them but like for me and i think a place of comfort for everybody is to realize that is like that's incredible like that is so cool like to understand that you may never know any like you there's a hundred percent chance that you're gonna leave this world without knowing everything dude i don't know I don't know, but for me, that is just so beautiful, and I think everybody can benefit from that, you know, and the fact that I'm, I'm in school again, and I'm learning, I don't know, and I've, I've surrounded myself with people that are fucking incredible, and very um, strong individuals, and well-read individuals, and just intelligent people who have lived a life with so many experiences, and I think that is so important to do to find those people. And really embrace them and become addicted to learning. And it's, you know, I don't know. I was watching this movie with my girl um, called Invictus. And I'm sure you guys know this movie. But um, it was about Nelson Mandela. And after he got out of prison, he was in prison for 27 years. And I think he went to jail just for, like, protesting or, like, going against his government at the time. And they locked him up. And he comes out. And he becomes Nelson Mandela. You know, he, he, he unifies South Africa together after apartheid. And he... And a big, you know, the big part of the movie is he does it with Matt Damon and uh, in the movie, uh, Morgan Freeman and Nelson Mandela, and Matt Damon is like the lead soccer player, a lead rugby player, and they unify the whole country, you know, and they, and they drop down their differences because they know in order to build anything, you gotta combine as a team, you know, like you could be as powerful as you want to, but you're gonna get beat by an army every time, you know. I don't care if you're the most the strongest individual with the most, you're the most well-read individual, you're the most intelligent individual, you're the most cultured person ever. You're going to lose against a team of 100 people who are a quarter intelligent you are, it's quarter the strength that you have. Every time, like you have to, you have to build up, you have to drop your differences and you have to build up a team, a team that is like-minded, a team that is strong, that a team that has its, abilities and it's and, and and what they don't have another person makes up for you know and i think that's something that we could all use right in this political world that we live in i think everybody could use that i think everybody could find peace in that i think everybody can challenge himself every day to like to like challenge what they think you know and and and, and open up your 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 vision to a different group uh, a different segment of society you know, because that's the only way you combine, you can you can come together and you can live a better life. Like like you don't want a world full of losers, right? Nobody wants a country full of, of fucking losers. Nobody wants that. We want a world full of successful people. We want a healthy economy. We want a a, a healthy you know just healthy population. We want a low infancy rate. We want a we want a longer lifespan. And we want all these things. We want a powerful government. We want to, or not a powerful government, but we want a powerful economy, you know, and a powerful government. That's some people say yes, some people say no. But what, what, what you need is to agree to disagree. You need to come together on some topics and you can't just be fighting. It seems like every day there's just always fighting going on. There's always them versus me. There's always red versus blue. And it's absurd. It's absurd that people talk down upon other people because of the viewpoints, but realizing that your viewpoints is only there because somebody at some time gave you their viewpoints. Your viewpoints are everybody else's viewpoints. Your viewpoints are not single-handedly developed by yourself. They were taken and given by other people. You know, and it's like you don't have to agree with everybody. But but 
but you also don't have to be a, a, an asshole to everybody, you know? And it's like, I don't know what happened, but it seems like we just live in a world right now where everyone is just so quick to attack. Everybody wants to, like, tear down. Everybody wants to be a victim. Everybody wants to show how hard their life is and, and to show how weak somebody else is being. And everybody wants to, like, to, 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 to be front and center all the time, not realizing how much damage that does. You know, you can't have... Like, that's how societies fail when everybody starts attacking each other, when everyone wants to be the victim. You know, you gotta, everyone's gotta come together. Like, you hate Trump or don't like Trump, you know? You love him or you hate him. It's like, it's like one of those things where it's like, it's one of those things where you can hate Trump, but to say that you hate everybody who supports Trump is absurd. I, to, to, to assume that if you support Trump, you're, you're a crazy racist is absurd. To throw around words like Nazi is absurd when there's actually real Nazis out there. To say things about other people that are not even factually true, but you're just saying because you think you're winning and you're bettering the world by calling a gentleman or a woman a Nazi when real Nazis do exist. You know, and there's people that live among us where their parents got killed by Nazis. It's horrible. You know, it's horrible, especially when it's another American or a, a citizen or it's a family member. You know, and the people just get so heated on these topics that are so, like, empty. You know, it's just so empty and just pissing everybody off all the time. And this won't be a long podcast, I promise, because I do have to... Uh, Get going to go to work here very soon. I'm just it's probably just gonna be a forty five minutes, forty five minute long podcast. But that, as I was gone this weekend, you know, I was just thinking about you know I wasn't really watching the news ever. Here's the truth: I would never watch the news if the place I work at has the news on all the time, just because you know there's TVs and it's a gym and people want to watch TV as they work out. If I didn't have to do that, I would never watch it because it is so toxic. It's so toxic because it's not even news. Like people are just so rude to each other. You know, I, I get on Facebook and uh, people I know are putting out like these, these 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 posts about like this person is evil because they they side with this group, and it's like that's just that's fucking rubbish. Like we all like, don't you understand what you're saying is absolute garbage? And it just doesn't make sense and, and how dumb you sound. And people sound so dumb all the time saying these things. Because you're generalizing is so grateful. And it's, it's so detrimental to everybody. You know, it's like if you have a society where everyone attacks everybody, you think you're doing the right thing because you think that your values are higher than everybody else's. So you're going to attack the other side. Well, guess what? They have viral values too that they think are higher than yours. So they're going to attack this side. And then everyone's going to attack to each other and then attacking each other and it's going to crumble. You know, that's how it works. It all crumbles, you know. Instead of where we used to be able to just like drop our differences and agree with what we agree on, right? You know? It's, I don't know, it's so crazy. I still remember in the part of my book called Behave where... The first thing that that people do before they attack each other physically, the only way you can do it is if you can dehumanize people to make them feel like to, to so so in your head you think that they're an animal. You know that they're not a human anymore. I'm not saying that's happening, but it's it looks like it is sometimes. We're not treating people with like feelings anymore. We're so quick to call somebody this and call somebody that without actually knowing the person. Like how could you hate was how could you hate somebody when you've never spoken to the person? You've never had a conversation with this person. You don't even know them. You have no idea who they are. You just know who they are from what somebody said about them. Or somebody what what, what they said one time in their life. Like you've never made a mistake, you've never said something that's off the wall. You know, and I feel like I talk about this on every podcast, but I honestly I wanna I want to bring a notice to it and I know it's probably not my job definitely not my job but I do think somebody has to say something about it 
you know, and you guys watch my podcast, and I, I, I guarantee you guys could make predictions, but I know nobody out there knows my political views. I know that 100% because I don't really know, them. and that's okay, and I don't want people to know because I don't want to show bias because guess what? To really love and respect a person, you don't need to know the politics. You don't need to know where they stand on something. You don't. Do they look you in the eyes when you have a conversation with them? Do they give you attention when you speak to them? Are they respectful people? Boom. Who cares about anything else? Am I right? I know I am. Who cares about anything else? It's so crazy. I've seen it time after time after time where you have a full-on conversation with somebody. And there's somebody else in the room. And then you walk away from that person and then somebody's like, oh, did you know they support Trump? They voted for Trump. And then that conversation you have with the person is out the window. People hate that person now. And you're like, what? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? You just spoke to that person. You understand who they are. You know, and yeah, there's, you know, there's sociopaths in the world and there's people that can lie very easily, cold-bloodedly. But there's also people who are... You know, no, they're not. Everybody is complex. <laughs> Everybody has viewpoints and opinions that, you know, can change. And you can't, you, we're not that simple. You can't just make a box and put it around somebody. It's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's retarded. You can't do that. It doesn't make sense. It's not, that's not how it works. No, no, nobody's that simple. All of us are complicated. We all have thoughts throughout the day. We have very dark thoughts. We think about killing people. You know, we, we think about doing this. We think about doing that. We think about doing great things. We're so complex. We're bouncing around all over the place. You can't pinpoint one person just like you can't pinpoint an emotion. You know, and it's like once once you can understand that, I think that's, a, that's where we all need to be. We all need to find a place where, you know, we start respecting people for people, for who they are. When you had a conversation with them and to understand that they can have a bad day and you can have a bad day. And when you have a bad day, you hope you, I hope you think you hope that they don't think you're an asshole, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Become addicted to learning and, and, be, and, if, and start understanding that, 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 that nothing, that nothing is binary, you know, like just like people, we're not binary. We're all ever changing creatures. And that's, you know, that's beautiful. I think that's a beautiful thing. I think that's a place that all of us could, we could all use that. You know, we can all use that. But um, I don't know. I don't know. Did you guys see the, uh, that, that, that Miles Garrett, um, that, that, My, that Miles Garrett guy for the uh, Browns hit Mason Rudolph in the head with the football helmet? I'm not going to talk too much about the play itself, but essentially what happened is Mason Rudolph got tackled, I think, and he like kind of like he almost like choked Miles Garrett, like he was like choking him, but like it almost like he was like like tickling his neck or something, and then like they get in a scruffle. Which first of all, by the way, Miles Garrett is like six foot five, like three hundred thirty pounds, and Mason Rudolph looked like he was like four foot one, like a rag doll, and Miles Garrett is a massive defensive uh, defensive back or defensive tackle. And Mason Rudolph, it's a guy who literally like he died three weeks ago when he got hit really hard. Like they had like cut his mask off and it looked like he died on the field. It was so brutal to see. Um and they get in the scruffle. And they start going back and forth. And Miles Garrett like rips his helmet off, Mason Rudolph's helmet, and starts like smashing him on top of the head like a fucking barbarian. And they ended up uh, suspending Miles Garrett for the entire year. And then they suspended Mike Pouncey, I think, for three games, who was like the center for the Steelers, who um, he obviously gives the ball. He, he's really tight with Mason Rudolph. Usually like, center and quarterbacks are really tight with each other. And um, he comes off and he just starts like street fighting Miles My, Garrett. Uh, he's like down. He's like kicking him, punching him. And Mason Rudolph, I don't think, got suspended. Miles um, Garrett got suspended for the entire year without pay. I think he, they also fined him like two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So he's probably losing out on a million, a couple million. And then um, Mike Pouncey got suspended for three games. Did you see what OJ Simpson came out and said? 
OJ Simpson, who uh, was the guy who killed those two women and was found not guilty, he comes out on Twitter and he he starts giving his input about it, and it was the most absurd thing. First of all, I don't know if you guys follow him on, on Twitter, um, but it's so insane. This guy gets on there, and since you can't you can't double we have double jeopardy, so you can't be fought, you can't be charged for the same crime twice in this country. So you have this guy who literally murdered two people just roaming the streets, and he's, like, giving his input on it. He's, like, saying how, you know, Miles Garrett, like, shouldn't be suspended for a whole year because Mason Rudolph did this and this and this. And you hear this literally murderer, non-convicted, but this guy who killed two women just, like, speak upon this, like, street fight. It was so absurd to think about. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to get that real quick. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this podcast right here. I got to get going to work very, very soon. Um, yeah, so we're back, guys. It was episode 43. You know, I'm going to keep pushing them out Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, or Monday, or Tuesday, and Thursdays. I'm going to try to do it every Thursday at 5. I'm going to try to do Monday and Tuesday, um, but definitely Monday, and if not Monday, it's going to be Tuesday at 5 o'clock. 7.30 a.m. is the audio, um, but I hope you guys enjoy this episode a lot. If you guys did, please like, comment, subscribe, share it with people. Um, make sure you check out the, uh, the audio version, leave a rating there. Um, yeah, guys, keep showing love. You guys are beautiful people. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful, great day. Thank you.